Now that we've started creating types and using types, it's important to understand how namespaces come into play. All .NET types belong to some sort of namespace. If you take a look here at our constants.cs file at the top, I'll just collapse my class definition here. You can see that we have a namespace, LinkedIn.essentials, wrapping that class definition. And this is the traditional way that you would define the namespace that your types are contained in. In the middle file, our defining types, where we have our person and our employee and manager, notice at the top we have namespace, LinkedIn.essentials, and a semicolon. So the real difference here is the first example up top, you wrap the classes or types within the namespace. And in the second, in the middle, you simply declare the namespace at the top with the semicolon. That one, as you can see from the comment, is new in c -sharp 10. And it essentially came about because most people define one type per file. And even if they don't, all the types in a given file are probably in the same namespace. That's part one. We've declared the namespace that our type belongs to. But the other piece, and we've skipped over this a bit in our earlier examples, shows up in the bottom pane in our program.cs. Here I've got on line two, a namespace declaration saying I'm using the LinkedIn.essentials namespace. What that means is bring that into scope and any types that are defined in that namespace should be available without having to be fully qualified. So our constants that we used before on line four shows up and works just fine. Now, if I comment this out, we'll get an error. And we saw this in an earlier example when we were using the command line compiler. We got an error that it couldn't find system. So here it's saying, well, I don't know what constants is. It's not currently in scope, but I can copy LinkedIn.essentials here, paste that at the beginning, get rid of the semicolon, and do a dot, and now it's happy. And this shows that the type name is actually made up of both the namespace and the type name. So you can think of this as the fully qualified type name for our constants type, the linkedin.essentials.constants. If we go down to the program.cs and I try and do a console write line, maybe I'll write out that DB string there. This is where we saw that problem before because console is actually in the system namespace. Normally, I would have to do something like this. We see we don't have any problem with that. In fact, I could also come down and use system.console. It does tell me then by dimming or graying out line three that I don't need that using statement because I'm fully qualifying it. What's happening here, again, is something new in c -sharp 10 and .NET 6 where we have namespaces that are automatically in scope. So there are default namespaces defined, and they'll vary based on whether you're building a console application or a web application, but you can get a reference to all of those different namespaces that are included by default when you compile using Visual Studio, for example, in the project system. The key thing to understand is that in order to use a type, you either have to use a fully qualified name, like I'm doing on line five in the bottom, or you have to include the namespace with the using statement, and then you can use the type names themselves. And the whole point of namespaces is to help make type names unique so that my person class or my employee class doesn't clash with an employee class in a library that I'm using. This notion of namespaces and fully qualified type names is hopefully easy to grasp now in this single application but let's make it a little more complicated by going to our solution. I'm going to choose to add a new project. I'm going to add a library project here. So it's going to be a DLL that we have as part of our solution. It's going to be a library for our types. So we'll call this LinkedIn.essentials.types. We'll add that in choosing to use the .NET 6. And now that we've got that project, let's go ahead and bring these types down here. So I'll drag the defining types and the constants over there. I'll clean up the default class one. 
and then we'll remove those both from this project or from the application itself. So now we've got our program.cs, that's in our little console application. And notice we're starting to get an error here, saying, I don't understand this LinkedIn. Even if I go up here and I uncomment the using, again, it says, I don't know about this LinkedIn. It turns out that namespaces aren't enough. In order for me to use that namespace, I have to reference the assembly that contains it. The simplest way to do that in this scenario is to go right click on my project, I can add a project reference, and then it'll show me my projects and I can select that particular project. You'll notice I have other options here. I can go browse around for assemblies or those DLLs that are around, I can even go back and find some old COM objects that are available. Shared projects is another type of project. But for our example, we'll use this one right here. And now it's saying, great, now I understand the LinkedIn essentials. I'm having a little problem with the constants and we're gonna talk about that shortly. But now I understand the namespace. Again, it's grayed out on line two because I'm using a fully qualified name here. If I get rid of that, now my LinkedIn essentials still grayed out because of this problem. So let's say we come in and we do something like this, employee E equals new manager. And we can do E dot first name equals hello. And then we could write out our E dot first name. These types turns out are all available from that referenced assembly. I can see the employee, the manager type. I have access to all of those because that namespace is now in scope and I've added a reference to the assembly. With the C-sharp compiler, we looked at doing that on the command line, you can add references in. So what you're essentially saying is compile these C-sharp source files, but know that there are some types I'm using that are in these referenced assemblies. And the compiler then knows where to go and look for those to understand how to compile your code. Another common way that you're gonna add a reference is you're going to use NuGet, as I mentioned before. So if I come to the project, go to the manage NuGet packages. Again, these are things you can do on the command line or you can do them in your IDE. So maybe I'll choose JSON here and I'll get the very popular newtonsoft.json and I'll choose to install that. So now I'm installing a NuGet package and what that means is it's going out to nuget.org, downloading the package file with all the metadata, all the versions we saw. It's installing it into my program here. I've got a particular version installed. And then if we go to the project and expand this dependencies, so we have a packages node and there's that newtonsoft.json. If we go to the projects node, we'll see our project. We can see the different references that we have. And now I could do using newtonsoft.json to bring that namespace in. I'm not currently using any of the types there, and so it doesn't necessarily need that using statement. So I could do a JSON serializer. Say I want a new JSON serializer, and then I could say s serialize, and it wants a writer and an object, or I could go out and get a text writer. So we can go and say, let's write out to console.out and let's pass our, remember that when I tried to use that constants from my LinkedIn essentials, I don't have any properties there. If I look at the error from the compiler, it says it's inaccessible due to its protection level. In addition to the namespace being in scope, the reference being there, I also have to make sure that the accessibility that I've defined opens up my type to all the users I want or locks it down to those that I don't. We were able to use employee and manager. So you can see there's a difference here. I have a static class constants. If we open our other classes. Notice these, including the interface, all have public as the access modifier at the beginning, meaning that they're accessible within this library to derived classes and even outside this library. Public essentially opens it up to anything that has a reference and has the namespace in scope. 
Constants, on the other hand, has no access modifier. And so for a class, a record, or a struct, the default is internal. That means that it's accessible within this set of compiled together files or within my assembly. So I should be able to go into my defining types, go into a method here, maybe the is active. I could go use the constants. You can see there's all the different properties there. So maybe I want to get the config server name from that. And I can use a string server equals because I want to use that here in my code for some reason. Being internal, constants is then available to all the different types inside this library that we're building. If I go back, you can see I have the private static string, connection string. That's private, which means it's only available within this static class. So if I come back out here now and I try and use the constants.connection string, it's not there. We could try typing it out. Got a lowercase c, that's why I'm getting that error. But we'll see if we type it right. It will say that it doesn't exist. Or it'll give me the error that says that it's inaccessible. Private then means it's accessible within that type itself. So we've got public, accessible to all, private, accessible just within that scope or within that type, and then internal, meaning available within our library. And the other one you'll commonly see is protected. So maybe for this public bool is active, we'll change this to protected. And what that means is it's accessible from this type or derived types. So if I go back out to my program here, we'll save everything to pick that up. I've got that employee that we've defined. Let's go ahead and see if we can call is active. Nope, we get an error. Again, it's inaccessible. We're in a different library. We can't use it here, but we can if we go to the defining types because it's defined in our employee class. We can use the new down here in is active, or we can, because we're in a derived class, we can say base is active. Protected items can be accessed from those derived types. There are some other combinations you can use, such as protected internal, which is really about combining those two things. So derived classes or internal types. So anything within the assembly, for example, or derived classes within the assembly or from another assembly that maybe references and uses your class as a base class. And private protected, that gives you both private, so within the class, as well as protected in classes that derive within your same assembly. This lets you control the accessibility of those methods and properties on your types to lock down the state or the functionality to only those types that should be able to use it. We'll go out here to our program and fix that so everything continues to be happy. I mentioned that one of the purposes of namespaces is so our types don't clash. Let's go over to our LinkedIn Essentials Types. I'm going to add a new class. I'm going to call it manager.cs. Notice that by default, I get a bunch of using statements up at the top. They all gray out because we're not using them. And then I get an internal class. So let's make it public called manager. And it's in the LinkedIn Essentials Types namespace. Our other manager class over here is in the LinkedIn.Essentials namespace. So if I go to program and I say I want to create a new manager by default because I have the LinkedIn Essentials namespace here, it's perfectly happy. But what if I'm also using the LinkedIn Essentials types namespace? Now I have a problem because manager isn't clear. Is it the types.manager or is it the essentials.manager? And I could fully qualify that. So I could maybe copy this here and I could bring it down and paste it. And now it's clear. Now I've given a fully qualified name. This is a very simple file though. As you start using this, if you're creating a class or you're creating something where you're using multiple types from these namespaces, it can get very verbose. So one of the things we can do is alias our namespaces. So we can say maybe le equals linkedin.essentials 
and let equals LinkedIn Essentials types. And now if I wanna use that manager, I can say le.manager. Notice employee is now giving me an error because it doesn't know what namespace. So I have to give it the le there. So it's a combination here. I'm still fully qualifying the type name, but I'm doing it with the alias so I can be less verbose. You may see this in existing code bases if you're not using it yourself. So I want you to understand that those aliases defined up at the top simply give you a shortcut to fully qualify your type name further down.